welcome back to another Better Together episode where we are on an ongoing journey on learning how we could succeed longer and more in the business by learning how to work better together with our team. Today, I'm going to talk about how downlines and uplines can work better together. Now, of course, we've got two caveats in this particular episode. The first one being that um, both of you are actually active. Both the upline and the downline are active in the business and that there is a certain level of trust between the upline and the downline. Now, in our business, this does not necessarily have to be automatic. That's because by way of the placement of our tree, you can only place two of your direct referrals directly connected to you, one on your left and one on your right. And so your third direct referral will naturally be placed under somebody else in the tree. So when I'm talking about downline and upline here, I'm talking about the sponsorship relationship and not the placement relationship. Because ultimately, no matter where one is placed in the tree, sponsorship is still the same. All right. So let's talk about three simple tips that I have learned and that I have been taught and that I still I'm sure need to learn more of, but that I'd like to share with you in this episode. Number one, let's respect the line of sponsorship. The line of sponsorship is really more than just that line that connects the two boxes in your genealogy, all right? That line of sponsorship represents the very heart of your business. Once you sign people up in our business, there is that hope and that assurance that these people will remain in our tree. And so it's important for us to first and foremost respect that. Okay, I know that there are times where you feel that your upline does not know how to support you or you feel that you know more than your upline. However, because of the way our business is structured, it's very important that we remain respectful of the line of sponsorship regardless of who is actually our upline. In the same way that we cannot choose our parents, we can't choose our uplines. So whoever it is that we have as upline, they're the ones that by divine master plan were there placed for us and they're the ones that we're meant to work with all right so respecting the line of sponsorship is also important because the integrity of our tree is essential to us achieving our goals imagine if you have a situation where that line of sponsorship is not guarded or is not held with utmost respect and importance. Anyone and everyone can just steal people or transfer to other trees. Where will that leave you? The whole point of our business is that we want to build an organization so that with that help of the organization, achieve our goals, whether that be earning an extra $500 a month or earning passive income or financial and time freedom. That's one. Number two, respecting the line of sponsorship is recognizing, like I said earlier, you can really only have one parent, right? Um, I looked at this relationship really from a parent perspective because I'm a parent and uh, I know the responsibility that comes from being a parent. So the moment I sign people up, I treat that as a lifelong responsibility and therefore I make sure I am able to invest myself, invest my time, give the support and elevate myself, raise myself up so that I could help and support my downlines even more. That kind of commitment is important for us uplines when we uh, relate with our downline. So respect the line of sponsorship. For downlines, that means that we honor our uplines. No matter who our uplines are, no matter what kind of disagreements we may have with our uplines, no matter if our uplines check out or become inactive or even leave the business, at the very least, we honor our upline because that person was the one who took the time to call you up invite you and present the plan to you. So if only for that, 
honor your upline and be grateful for your upline. If you have nothing else good to say about your upline, at least say, I'm grateful for my upline, right? Also, number two, as downlines, respecting the line of sponsorship is really taking everything upline. Let's not take any concerns or questions or challenges, cross line or downline. The way to do it is we always bring things upline, always upline. Number two, Building a better relationship between uplines and downlines is recognizing the different roles that an upline and a downline play. If we don't recognize that there is a difference in the roles, sometimes the confusion happens and with the confusion of who does what can lead to a uh, compromise of that line of sponsorship. So, what are the various roles? Again, looking at our parent-child relationship, stage one is treating the downline as a newborn baby. Now, it doesn't matter, downline, what your background is. Even if you're a vice president, CEO, director of your own company or of this multinational company, even if you are the super duper, you know, big shot already in another direct selling company, when you sign up in our business, you sign up as a newbie, as a newborn from the start from the beginning all right so bring that mindset and really treat yourself as a newborn which means you look to your upline to teach you now uplines we teach our new signups our newbies the same way we would teach our newborn child they depend on us for everything so let's make sure we give them the best of everything, the best knowledge, the best example, the best training, and the best results. As a newbie, what do they need? They need early success. We help them to make their own first check, hopefully within the first month that they get to earn already. Same way that a newborn child, our goal is to first get them to start walking, isn't it? For them to start learning how to do basic things on their own. So that's the first step. Teach that they're totally dependent on you and so therefore make sure you give them the best of what you can give them. Stage two is all about the independent stage. At this stage, we no longer celebrate when our downlines take their baby steps because at this stage, they need to be learning how to be independent already. So sometimes there's a challenge in the transition here because sometimes downline still expects the upline to always be, you know, there to always be supporting actively. However, at the stage two, what's most important is learning to be independent. As uplines, our role here is now supporting our downlines, but not at the front line, not even at the side sometimes, but really supporting them from behind to learn how to present on their own, make mistakes on their own, okay, and being there to catch them when they fall, just like a mother eagle will push its eaglet off the cliff for it to learn how to use its own wings, spread its own wings, and discover its own abilities. This is stage two. Stage three in this uh, role of us as uplines is really recognizing that ultimately what we want is for us to have an interdependence between downline and upline. What does that mean? There are times when a downline will be more successful than an upline. And that's great. That's something worth celebrating. At this stage, an upline is no longer supporting actively but at this stage, an upline will still be influencing their downlines by way of their leadership. And hopefully, both upline and downline are growing in the business together so that they can start to reach that stage where they are interdependent. Working together, recognizing that, yes, we already know how to do things, but we still recognize that working together is always better 
overall. That's the three stages in terms of our growth in the business and that's how we also evolve in our roles as uplines and downlines. But what never changes is that line of sponsorship, no matter how big you become, no matter how successful you become, that you still remain plugged to the tree, that you still remain connected to your upline in one way or another. Now, what if your upline is an absentee upline, shifts, becomes inactive, moves over to another business and whatever? That's fine because ultimately the success that you will attain in our business is still 100% up to you. At best, an upline can teach you, support you, guide you, train you, direct you, coach you, motivate you, but they can never make you succeed in the business. There's only one person who will make you succeed and that's you. So ultimately, you are the CEO of your business. Everything is up to you. So if your upline is absent, honor them, say thank you, and you know, on Christmas or Eid or Deepavali, send them a greeting with a thank you or a gift if you want. However, do the business the way you can, the way you must, and the way that you will. If your downlines refuse to listen to you, and I hear this a lot, they don't want to listen, they check out, they become inactive, guess what? That's life. A parent will always be a parent. Even if the children don't want to listen to the parents, right? It doesn't change the fact that we still are parents. So we just love our downlines where they're at. We keep connecting with them regularly, but leaving them where they're at. Maybe this is not the right time for them, but we know if we keep an open door, they will come back. And when they come back, at least the relationship side is still there, which makes you it easier to build the business and carry on from where that downline left off. Will there be betrayals and disappointments and hurts and heartaches in between downlines and uplines? Yes, 100% yes. Just like in any relationship, if a husband can betray his wife, if a child can, can hurt his mother, if a sister can have an argument with his brother, what more in our business, right? It's the same. So bottom line, if we want our business to work, we really need to learn how to look at our relationships the way other relationships are outside of the business and value and build these relationships to last but there is no guarantee. If you want to learn how to deal with conflicts in our team, I have a Facebook Live episode from previous weeks that you can watch and I will be posting an episode on that as well on VTube Plus so you can watch that. Let's go to the third tip. So the first the first way for uplines and downlines to work better together is we uh, respect the line of sponsorship. Number two is that we recognize that uh, both play different roles and that these roles vary depending on the stages of growth. And number three, which is the most important, remember the goal. What's going to make you really focus on building the relationship? What's going to make you not give up on that downline or uh, honor your upline? What's going to make you all do all of that? It's the whole point of our business, which is leverage. J. Paul Getty was quoted as saying, I would rather have 1% of 100 people than 100% of one person. So in our business, we need that group of people. We need to have that group of people, that team of people that will help us achieve our goals. Our business is designed in such a way that it's really all about everybody doing a little. And if you add all of that up, hopefully those little things will add up to a big thing. Now what if you only had 10 people in your team and everyone's just giving 1%? So at best, that's only 10%, right? Okay, now what if only 5 of the 10 give 1%? That's 5%. So this is still really a numbers game. That means if you want to have a significant uh, success in our business, we need to build a big 
team. We need to have as big a team as possible. 1% of 100 men, good. 1% of 1,000 people, even better. 1% of 10,000 people, really great. So that's the goal. The reason why a lot of people cry when their downlines ignore them is because they only have a few downlines. And so when three or four or five of them check out and you only have 10, you really feel the impact of that. What's the solution? Get into more activity, sponsor more people, show more of the plan, and really build your team so that you can generate more momentum and more activity and more excitement. And you will see as you start building more and as you start getting the excitement and activity going, even those who have checked out before will more likely come back when they see that there are results happening. So, to recap, having better upline and downline relationships starts with uh, respecting the line of sponsorship. I cannot underscore that enough. Recognizing that the roles will change depending on the stage of growth, but that that line of sponsorship will still really be critical. An upline is an upline and a downline is a downline. And number three, that our goal, remember our goal, which is leverage. So the best way I find to really uh, have the upline and downline relationship become better together is that we together agree and valuing the relationship and working towards more and more results. I hope this episode helps you and I hope that ultimately you will recognize that truly ours is a relationship business and the relationships are going to help you or uh, hinder you in building and succeeding in our business. God bless you all.